Located south of 10 U.S. northern states, this city boasts an iconic freestanding tower, 13 Stanley Cup wins, and a whole museum dedicated to shoes. We are exploring the gateway to Niagara Falls on this episode of Ms. World Traveler in Toronto. Hi friends, I'm Ms. World Traveler Carrie Damiano, inviting you on an adventure to discover style, design, fashion, art, and antiques in great shopping destinations across the country and around the world. Come with me. As Canada's largest city, Toronto's skyline is easily recognized by the 1,815-foot-tall CN Tower, built in 1975, which has two glass observation decks to take in the 360-degree panorama. Toronto could almost be called Skyscraper City, with how many are currently built and how many are in the planning stages. So for a $35 visit to the 114th story of the CN Tower, you'll get a spectacular, unimpeded view over the top. From the height of the CN Tower, you'll see the enormity of Lake Ontario and the 30 plus miles of shoreline bordering Toronto, which used to be the center of transporting trade goods. The former industrial area has been revitalized into a hub for arts and culture and is now utilized for concert venues, communal spaces, and both indoor and outdoor events. The Harbourfront Centre specifically promotes contemporary Canadian visual arts, music, dance, crafts, literature and theatre, but you can also rent a kayak, soak up the atmosphere in the music garden, or take a class. In addition to the CN Tower and the lovely Harbourfront Centre, Toronto has another attraction you can't find anywhere else. Housed in an architectural award-winning building, the Batashi Museum reflects 4,500 years of the style, development, and function of footwear from around the globe. The mission of the Batashi Museum is to better understand how footwear has shaped society and culture, and it is an internationally recognized center for research, published findings, and education. Located right downtown, we're gonna pop in and learn more about it because seriously, who isn't interested in beautiful shoes? <laughs> It all began when Sonia Bata, who was married to the Bata Shoe Company CEO, Thomas Bata, became enamored with collecting shoes from different cultures and time periods. She amassed a collection that soon outgrew her home, which led to establishing the Bata Shoe Museum Foundation in 1979. But finding a place to display them commensurate with the quality of the collection proved impossible. Then, architect Raymond Moriyama was commissioned to design the building, which mimics an exquisite shoebox, a lid, and a glass heel entry, and the museum was finally ready to open in 1995. Of their 15,000 artifacts, 
only about a thousand are on display at any one time, which means that there is continually something new to see. This particular exhibit, entitled Investigating Crime and Footwear, features forensics as it relates to footwear, as well as a look at how a local penitentiary taught shoemaking as a prisoner reform tactic. There are different sections highlighting different things. For example, this area focuses on the archeological collection, which showcases from early civilizations up through medieval times. This exhibit celebrates the 1980s and is dedicated to well-known designers and celebrity footwear, such as Princess Diana's black and white pumps, Serena Williams tennis shoes, and Nike Air Jordans. With only three to 4% of the collection on view at any one time, the Batashi Museum is a place you can return to again and again and always see and learn something new. Of course, they have a great little gift shop for you to check out before you leave. But we're heading to Queen Street West where we'll have a look at indigenous craft on the next segment of Ms. World Traveler in Toronto. See you then.